Hello everyone, welcome back. Kevin with Survivalist Boards. Let's take a few minutes to talk about stockpiling seeds for some type of crap hit the fan doomsday situation. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, click the notification icon. If you like the video, leave it a thumbs up. That'll really help out. Okay, it's been a while since we've done a stockpiling seed video. And it's like, well, let's talk about seeds, guys. And here we are, July 2018. In the next few months, these big box outlet stores are going to be putting their seeds on discount. A cheap, cheap discount. So you may think, well, I want to stockpile some seeds. I want to get some of these seeds that are on sale. So what should I look for? Okay, let's talk about this video is going to be divided into three different categories. Your types of seeds, your hybrid, heirloom, GMO. Types of seeds or plant varieties to get. And then finally, we're going to be looking at my personal seed stockpile. Because it's easy to get up here and say, do this, this, and this. And then it's somebody needs to set the example. Somebody needs to set the example of it's easy to say this, this, and this without ever doing it myself. So at the very end of the video, we're going to be looking at my personal seed stockpile. Seeds are divided in about into three different categories. You've got your heirloom, your open pollinated. These bear true to form. If you plant, say, a jalapeno pepper plant that is heirloom and you harvest that pepper. You save the seeds, take the seeds, plant it next year. It grows next year. The pepper it produces will be like the pepper from the parent. It's open up basically all there is to it with open pollinated heirloom seeds. They just bear true to form. You can save the year. You can save the seeds year after year after year, and the resulting fruit or resulting food three or four years down the road will be very similar, exactly like what it was for the first year. Hybrids do not bear, probably will not bear, we're not, we can't talk in absolutes. Hybrids will probably not bear true to form. They may be sterile, okay? So what exactly is a hybrid? A hybrid is whenever you take one type of plant and plant it next to the same type of plant next to it. Like let's say you've got some jalapeno pepper and some banana pepper or some bell pepper or some cayenne, longhorn, but they're all in the pepper family. So you take those peppers and you plant them all close together and as the bugs and the bees go from uh, flower to flower to flower to flower pollinating and collecting the little nectar, they will cross pollinate. And you take those seeds from the jalapeno pepper plant after it's been cross pollinated with a banana pepper or a cowhorn pepper or something else, take that jalapeno pepper save the seeds and plant it next year it may or probably will not be true to form it will have traits of both parents then you take that seed from that hybrid and you save the seeds from the hybrid this is where it gets a little tricky is that you take the seed from the hybrid save the seeds then plant them that third year that third year is that it will probably revert back to one of the original parents so it's not going to bear true to form or it may not bear at all it may be sterile it may not grow if it does grow if it does sprout it may not grow so with saving the seeds from hybrid plants you hybridized plants you really don't know what you're going to be getting where heirloom and heritage breeds open pollinated you do gmo is exactly as the name implies it's genetically modified say that you take the some scientist takes a gene from a puffer fish and takes that gene from a puffer fish that emits a toxin and splices that into corn now the corn produces a mild toxin that kills all the bugs that try to eat it. So GMO seeds are very tightly controlled by the companies that manufacture them. So we're not even going to talk about stockpiling seeds. All we're going to talk about is heirloom up open pollinated and your hybrids. There is a common misconception, especially in the prepping survivalist community, that hybrid seeds are bad. Hybridized seeds are not bad. That is a false fallacy it's it's a total it's wrong it is wrong to sit there and do a blanket statement that all hybrid seeds are, are bad that you should not stockpile hybrid seeds which is totally incorrect hybrid seeds have several benefits is that some of them are more dry or more could be more drought tolerant than the parents may be more pest resistant blight resistant than the parents so if you've got let's say Let's use an example of corn, full corn, for example. Let's say you take a corn, an old heritage style corn that is blight resistant, and then you get planted next to another heritage, old style, open pollinated corn that is 
drought resistant and they cross pollinate. You save the seeds from those cross pollination as a hybrid. Well, chances are it's probably going to be drought resistant and blight resistant. So hybridized seeds, seeds, seeds saved from hybrid plants are typically, not always, typically more resistant to diseases and drought than either of the parent. So no, uh, if you want something that is drought tolerant, pest tolerant, or pest resistance, then go with hybrid. Just be aware that you're not going to be able to save the seeds. That's all there is to it. Types of seeds to stockpile. So what we're looking for are seeds that have a short growth span, but then whenever they start producing, they produce for a long period of time, if that makes any sense. Let's use corn. Let's use corn, for example. You put, plant corn, grows up get the ears off of it, stalk dies. That's all there is to it. I mean, it's not like corn continues to produce uh, ears of corn all year long. Once, once the corn plant produces, bears the, bears the ears of corn, the stalk is gonna die. Compare that to contender snap bean, or Roma II snap bean, is that once the snap beans start producing, they're gonna produce until either the drought, a drought kills them, they run out of uh, nitrogen, they run, not nitrogen, they run out of nutrients in the soil, frost kills them, they will continue to produce for a long period of time. So if you have, say, corn that grows this much, then produces this much this period of time, or something like snap beans that grows, then produces all summer long, which one would you rather have in a crap hit the fan doomsday, doomsday situation? Personally, I want the crop that's going to be producing all summer into the fall and then like peppers peppers jalapeno pepper plants very drought i'm not drought tolerant heat tolerant they grow well in the heat just make sure they have plenty of water <coughs> use some type of good organic fertilizer to go with them throw down something like some triple 13 or in a doomsday crap hit the fan situation you compost some manure take that manure till it into the ground let that manure sit in the ground for a few weeks for a couple of months not a few weeks for a couple of months month or so let it start breaking down, then plant those peppers on top of it. Same thing with beans and peas. Beans, if you're, if anyone is going to stockpile a seed for a crap hit the fan, doomsday situation, seed, bean and pea seed should be at the very top of your list. Contender snap bean, old, old time favorite. Contender snap bean, it's a open pollinated, save the seeds, purple hole peas. Uh, open pollinated heirloom save the seeds but not if you plant them close together you need to plant one like over in one field one another field or just plant one per season and then okra okra is a wonderful hot weather crop the hotter it gets better okra produces and okra does not only produce once it produces all summer long right up to the first first frost jalapeno pepper plants if you plant those in say march or april and you pull in them inside of a big pot. The frost, you got a winter coming in, move them in the house during the frost, move them back outside during the winter, whenever the frost clears during the day, as long as it's not below freezing, below the frost level. Chances are those jalapeno peppers are gonna live all the way through the winter, produce through the winter, and then all the way through the summer. So pe pepper plants do not die off at the end of the summer. Squash and zucchini, wonderful, wonderful plants, but you cannot can or preserve squash or zucchini. So that you harvest it, you eat it within just a few days. Winter squash, like acorn squash. What's the round one? Uh, trying to remember. But anyway, some of the winter squash, they stay good for months. Keep them in a cool, dry location. Produce, start planting them towards the end of summer, into the fall. Not that they grow in the winter. Back up. Winter squash is not that it grows in the winter that it can be stored over the winter. You harvest it before winter, put it in a cool, dry location, like up on a cabinet or something, box underneath the bed or something, and then it will stay in a cool, dry location. It will stay good for a couple of months. So it's not that you grow it in the winter, it's that you can store it through the winter. Okay, talked about hybrid, heirloom, GMO, types of seeds to stockpile, bean, pea, okra, some corn, squash, zucchini, uh, sunflowers, anything that can be canned, preserved, dried, tomatoes, get you some tomato seeds. What about corn? Some people are going to say, well, Kevin, what about the corn? Indian Native Americans grew corn. Well, guys, 
The corn that's sold at the local farm supply store is a lot different than the corn that the Native Americans grew. If you want to grow true corn, true corn, now real corn, like what the Native Americans grew, we'll have to get on some of those websites, those seed websites, and buy true Native American old heirloom corn. Anything that says sweet corn on it, or has a number such as G90 is a hybrid. Anything that says sweet corn is a hybrid type of corn. If it does not say uh, G90, if it doesn't have a uh, number associated with it, or it doesn't say sweet corn, then it's probably going to be an old heirloom open pollinated corn. Finally is my personal seed stockpile. So let's go take a look at it. Here's part of my seed stockpile. This is just what I could bring out. This this and this is just what I could bring out at one trip. I just had one hand use the other hand to use one hand to hold the tub, plastic bags, and another hand to open the door to get out. So this is just what I could bring out in one trip. Guys, I've got almost uh, probably half of this, three quarters of this, probably enough to fill up this tub again, still in the deep freezer. So let's take a look at my personal seed stockpile because it's easy to talk. I mean, it's easy for people to get up there and and talk about this or that. It's another thing to actually show the people what you're doing and then reinforce your statements. Here's some squash. 2011 is when I bought this. Now these type of seeds are sold by the ounce. You're not going to buy this by the pound. Here's some good squash seed. Get inside there, take a look. This stuff is sold by the ounce. You walk into a local feed store, tell them, okay, I want some squash seed. Well, how much you want? Chances are they're going to take out a little beaker. And they'll start filling it up and say, okay, this is 25 cents, or this is as much as 50 cents, this is as much as 75 cents, as much as a dollar, and you just keep telling them how much you want to spend. So, all right, squash. Pickling cucumbers. Cucumbers are somewhat overrated for a survivalist garden because they their, their biggest nutrient is water. They're not very drought tolerant. Roots are close to the top of the ground. There's but I'm not saying don't. I'm not saying do not stockpile cucumbers because you can see I've got some. Because I like me some cucumbers, especially make some pickles and stuff out of them. The coating, the green coating is a pesticide. Keep bugs from getting in there. Same thing, they're going to sell this by the ounce. Get you 50 cents here or there, go to the feed store. This was bought in 2016. Now this is, beans and corn are sold by the pound. Quarter pound. Hey, there's... PC, what is this? This is a Mississippi Purple Hole Pink Eye. This pound was $2.25. Sweet G90. Do you remember what I said about the sweet corn? Anything that says sweet on it or has a number such as G90 is going to be a hybrid. So, once again, the pink on there, the pink coloring is a, like a pesticide to keep bugs and stuff from growing in it. It'll wash off and get it wet. Plant it, it'll come out, even handle it whenever you're sweaty. Have it come off. Emerald Velvet Okra. This is sold by the ounce. Okra seeds down in there. See how small them seeds are. This is a heirloom open pollinated okra, so I'll be able to save the seeds from that. Bodacious corn. I think that will be a heirloom type of corn. A what is this? Cucumber, more cucumber, straight eight, one dollar. This was bought on 2008. How long will seeds stay good for? I have germinated seeds that have been in the freezer for a decade. In 2007, I germinated and grew squash, um, let's see, squash, onion, peas, sunflowers from seeds that have been in the freezer for a decade, from 2007 to 2017. These will be sold, uh, cantaloupe, Squash, banana squash, banana, uh, not banana squash, banana cantaloupe. Take those seeds if you want for a little extra protection, help keep the oxygen off of them, air off of them while they're in, in the freezer. Just take and put them inside of a Ziploc bag. These are contender snap beans. Good, good, open pollinated. Plant these by themselves, not next to any other pea or bean, and you'll be able to save the seeds from them. Let's see here, cucumber. Pickling cucumber, pickling cucumber, uh, pinto beans, one pound pinto beans, crookneck squash. Again, these are sold by the ounce. See how just 
get a hold of it. I think that probably that's probably a dollar's worth right there. 50 cents. 50 cents. Emerald gold okra. Sparkler radish. 50 cents. Let's take a look at those radish seeds. These are some greens. Make some small, small seeds. Look how small those seeds are, guys. You can stockpile nearly millions of these. Hundreds of thousands of these seeds, and they're not going to hardly take up any room whatsoever. Radish, good seed. Radish, you can eat the, eat the whole thing. <laughs> That's something else we did not talk about, was being able to eat the whole plant of how much of the plant goes to waste. With something like bean, bean, peas, corn, a lot of the plant goes to waste. Where stuff like radish, turnip greens, mustard greens, you eat the whole plant. You eat the whole plant. Y'all right, get the general idea. This is just for this box. Blue Lake Bush Bean. So that's Purple Hole Pea, Contender Snap Bean, Roma 2 Snap Bean. So what I'm when I, what I said about stockpiling beans and peas, you can see that I am in fact doing this. One pound Roma 2 Snap Bean. Some seeds that I saved myself from stuff. Number one, yellow dent field corn. This is heirloom, open pollinated. If it says field corn, it's open pollinated. Missing one pound, Mississippi purple hole pink eye. And if you see something like Mississippi purple hole pink eye, and it says BVR, that is a virus resistant strain of the pea. Go ahead and get that. Go ahead and buy that up. Roma 2 bush. Blue Lake Bush. So y'all can see that what I was talking about, buying a lot of Blue Lake Bush, what I was talking about, okra, emerald, emerald okra. Just in this one bag, Mississippi Pink or Pink Eye Purple Hole. So all this, except for the field corn right there, is exactly what I said over there in the video about, except for the except for the um, okra right there. All of this is peas, beans, and peas. Yellow dent field corn, Mississippi purple hole pink eye, uh, sweet G90. So this is mostly, then this bag here is mostly, all right, we've got contender and contender. Love that contender snap bean, that's some good stuff. So, Chances are, a lot of y'all are going to go to the local store, and you're going to see a bunch of these seeds marked down. Let's talk about them. All right, so there we are. That's that. You're going to see a lot of these seeds like this marked down, like tomatoes. What I do is after I buy these seeds, it's two for a dollar. I think these are marked down to 25 cents each. Beef steak, it'll say somewhere, usually it'll say somewhere like hybrid or something. If it doesn't say hybrid, then chances are it may be a heirloom, open pollinated. What I do, see here's the pack of seeds that I germinated, see, 11 of 07. This is the pack of seeds that I germinated that were a decade old. And there's the date right there, sold by 2007. Take these seeds and organize them. This is mostly tomatoes. Oh, that's tomatoes. Leave them sealed, put them in a Ziploc baggie, put them in a deep freezer. Beans. Garden bean. Beans, beans, peas, just all kind. Pea. Also, these would make good barter items for after the crap hits the fan, after some type, some type of doomsday event. You can barter with these packets. You know how much is in there. You don't have to measure them out. They've got the date on them for the person to see some type of doomsday crap hit the fan situation happen. See, 12 of 17, you tell them that these, these seeds are only so many years old. Butternut squash. Let's see what's in here. This should be winter, winter type of stuff. What I did was I organized all these little seed packets, summer, winter, stuff like that. Yeah, these are fall crops. Pumpkin squash, acorn squash, good winter. That's a winter squash. These will stay good. Onions, yep. Spinach, excellent, excellent. Don't forget about spinach. Spinach is wonderful to stockpile. Take those seeds, organize them into packets, say fall, spices, herbs, spring, peas, beans, however you feel like organizing them. Put them inside of a Ziploc baggie for extra protection, freezer bag. 
Now what else we have here? Broadleaf mustard. These are sold by the ounce. Take a look at these mustard seed guys. Come on how little those are. You can stockpile literally hundreds of thousands of those seeds in almost no room whatsoever. What did I pay for that? 50 cents. Paid 50 cents for that. I don't know how many tens of thousands of seeds are in there. Pay, pay 50 cents for that. Trucker's favorite. That's going to be a, a field corn, I believe. Jubilee watermelon. <coughs> watermelon is the one thing that I would not stockpile a lot of. Simply because it takes so many nutrients, so much water, it bears once, and then that's it. It's not like snap beans where it bears for six months at a time. Got your peppers over here. Got some sweet banana pepper. Yellow dent field corn. What does that say about if it's not a number? If it's not a number, or doesn't say um, hybrid uh, sweet corn, then chances are it's an heirloom. All right, squash, that's that for that, for that bag. Uh, that's it for this collection, guys. That's it for this. I've got probably, I wouldn't say twice as much, but I've got another good load in the freezer. But there, there's my personal seed stockpile. And just as I talked about, a lot of my stuff is dedicated to plants that produce for a extended period of time, like contender snap beans. You plant those in March, they're 60 days. Come May, they'll start producing. And they should die towards this summer, but you're gonna pick these every couple of days. Get some good manure in there, some good compost. You'll be picking these contender snap beans every couple of days. All right, guys and gals, that's it for now. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you have any feedback, let me know. In an upcoming video, we're gonna be talking about crop rotation, about rotating crops. And I don't wanna get this video too far off topic, but like what crops would be good to plant after certain types of crops. Hey guys and gals, that's it for now. I will talk to y'all later.